Hey guys, it's Nathan here from Robot Masters, and I'm super excited to provide you guys daily videos of these cool robot vacuums. And off to my left, or your right, we got the Nido G7, and off to my right, or your left, we got the Roomba S9. So, have you ever asked yourself how well does the Roomba S9 navigate high profile carpet? And does the Nido G7 do any better than its similar shaped Roomba S9? So in this video, I'm going to answer all these high-profile carpet questions and I'm also going to weigh the dustbins and see if these robot vacuums can pick up any debris on this carpet. You guys stay tuned and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got the Roomba S9 and the Needle D7. Let's go ahead and weigh the Needle D7 here. I'll go ahead and put in the description the actual capacity of both dustbins but for this one it's 8.925 ounces and we're going to go ahead and check out the Roomba S9's dustbin okay we're looking at 11.26 ounces so what do you guys think which one holds more dirt the Roomba S9 or the Needle D7 Okay, right off the bat, we got the Needle D7. One thing to know is it is running at its highest power setting at 20 CFM. There's also an option to run it at 17 CFM. I think the Needle D7 will have an advantage over the Roomba S9 because the extractor sit up higher, which will allow better maneuverability over the Roomba S9. Okay, this is a real life test. I did not edit out of any sections of the Needle D7 getting stuck. It literally got stuck four times. I had to keep moving in different areas to see if it will avoid this shag rug. Eventually, I got fed up and just rolled the carpet over and it finally went ahead and continued its cleaning job. One thing to note is the D7 had a very successful initial training run. This was on its low power setting. So I suspect since it wasn't really Having a high airflow, it wasn't getting caught up on this sh shag rug. There are several methods to avoid this. You could either A, roll up the carpet like I did, or you can use the app, there's no go zones, which is nice. You can just draw out invisible lines to keep the robot out of that area. Lastly, it comes with magnetic strips, so you can lay down magnetic strips underneath the carpet. Here's another look at the D7 maneuvering around this chair. It actually does a really good job kind of lightly bumping into the chair. It doesn't really move the lightweight chair. It just kind of lightly bumps into it and goes around the chair legs. It does a very good job navigating around them. Um, it's trying to get over behind the chair in the corner there where the couch is. Okay, so here's when the D7 kind of goes downhill and I think... Needle needs to work on its algorithms because it does find maneuvering around the furniture but when it tries to exit out of this path it really can't even though there's a clear opening it kind of gets hung up on this chair blocking the path so it tries going back behind the couch and then it tries one more time ultimately giving up.
So, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the navigation on the Needle D7. I don't want to trash the Needle D7, but I really think Needle needs to go back to the drawing board with its algorithms because for an $800 robot, I expected a lot better performance. So here's what the map thinks to cleaned is highlighted in gray, but it technically actually went over in the other area for a bit as well. Just two months ago, if you asked me, should I get the Roomba S9 for high-profile carpet, I would say absolutely not. It would do horrible navigating high-profile carpet, but look at it now. It's doing really well. It's able to get to these walls, no problems. It's able to back up, turn swiftly, and not get hung up on these items. At the time of filming, I'm using software 1.14.22. This was the latest software. I really strongly believe that you can fix a product with just software and this is a true testament. Good job iRobot for making the Roomba less aggressive. Um, in this demonstration you will see it is slightly aggressive, there's a quick sharp turn, but it's not as bad as what it used to be, it used to rock itself back and forth. Here's another area where in between two corners it would not be able to turn it would just try to turn but it couldn't because the wheels would spin but now it kind of backs up a little bit and turns and keeps backing up and turning um i mentioned this two months earlier and i think irobot listened they kind of reevaluated how it navigated and it's navigating really well on its high profile carpet one thing to note is the robot will struggle with black objects it may slow down but it doesn't slow down enough in time so it will hit the object harder than an object that has color. I haven't had any issues with my front 3D sensor like on some users. The robot does slow down when it detects an object. The S9 does fine around the chair legs, does fine over the little threshold I created. It also does fine with the silver buzz dual. It really does navigate this obstacle course no problem. Doesn't show any signs of getting stuck. Doesn't show any signs of confusion like on a D7. So here's the example of the same scenario where the D7 tried to exit out of this area, but the Roomba S9 had no issues. I would note that the D7 does seem to do a lot of perimeter sweeping. It doesn't really do a lot of back and forth until the very end of this cleaning cycle. So I can't say for sure if it covered every area, but I would say it covered more than on the Needle D7. So I changed my mind on do I recommend the Roomba S9? I give it a 100% yes because now it can do really well on high profile carpet has no problem maneuvering over it. We'll see how much it can pick up. Keep in mind, I do vacuum my carpets regularly, probably about two or three times a week. So there's probably not much dirt on the carpet, but we'll see how much fibers and stray strands these robot vacuums can pick up. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, wet the dustbins. Uh, keep in mind that the Needle D7 got hung up on that chair leg and decided to end its cleaning run early. So we'll see if uh, the Dito D7 picked up anything, and the Roomba S9 was surprisingly did pretty well. Okay, let's start with the Dito D7. Alright, uh, 8.975. And we'll check the Roomba S9. We're looking at 11.41 ounces. Alright, so... I'll put the differences in the description below. Okay guys, what do you think? Did you like that test? The D7 versus the S9? We went ahead and went on a high profile carpet. We saw how well they maneuvered and we also saw how much they picked up on this obstacle course. Um, if you like these types of videos, please smash the like button. It really helps me gauge if this type of video is interesting or not. Also, my name is Nathan. If you haven't checked out my channel, welcome. This is all about cool robot vacuums where I upload daily and I do a lot of different types of tests. I do extreme tests, I do unboxings, overviews, and I got some new robots coming along. Hey, have you checked out the LG Cord R9? Yes, it looks like the Dyson Helix, 
but a lot cooler. I'm going to go ahead and get that robot unboxed very shortly. So stay tuned and subscribe. Thank you.